some little shoulder rolls to start with. Hello, come on in. Let's get started. So if you roll alternate shoulders. And I want you to turn your eye gaze to look over your shoulder. And just really slow your movement down. A bit like you're kind of on the moon. Breathing in as you go back. And then taking your feet just a little bit wider and softening your knees. And we're going to sort of sit down into it and a little Tai Chi twist. So you're looking behind over one side and then around the other and notice what can you see behind you each way. Going a little bit further round in your field of vision now. And then bringing your feet about hip width just keep going. I'd like you to bring your body weight forward so you rock into your toes and then rock back into your heels. And again, forwards into your toes and rock back into your heels. So you're just being aware of the connection of your feet with the ground. Here's Julia. Hello, just got started. As you rock forward now, I'd like you to rise onto your tiptoes and brush past your ears with your arm and then rock back to your heels again. So forward to your tiptoes and elongate your posture. Eye gaze coming up to the ceiling and then dropping back down. And again, looking between the hands, arching back a little bit particularly if you've been hunched over a lot today. And I'd like you to do that twice more. Breathing in and breathing out. Welcome the wobble. Inhale, exhale. Alrighty, and then little tap ups. We're going to point the toes. So just tapping your knee to your hand and pointing your toe downwards. Now, as you do it, you'll probably find you rock from side to side a little bit. Can you try to steady yourself? So pick a point so that you focus on a still point and lengthen up through the crown of your head so that you're reducing the rocking from side to side a little bit. Okay, and then from here, I'd like you to kick back, almost like you're trying to give yourself a kick up the bum. We all need one of those sometimes. So heel to the bottom, flicking the leg back. And still elongating through the posture. And then from here, we're going to go into a side lean. So opening the feet just a bit wider than the hip, softening your knees as you lean over to the side and reaching with your fingers and then coming back up. And the other way, breathing in as you lean, exhaling as you lift. Now I want you to apply a little bit of core technique so you're going to draw your belly button muscle in as you lean. Allow your belly to relax and draw the belly button in as you lean. Let your belly relax. And as you lean, also squeeze through your pelvic floor and then release. And do it again. Squeeze your pelvic floor. And can you go a little bit further over on your last couple? So you're sliding that hand down the side of the leg. And one more the other way. And then opening the arms wide, and bringing the knee up. So we're standing on the one leg. Lengthen your arms, opening your chest and your collarbones, pointing through your toes, 
elongating up through the crown of the head. And then reversing side in and down. And on this leg that we're supporting with, try not to let the hips stick out, draw in. Think of drawing up as well as in. Let's give that a go on the other side. Musical joints on this side of the screen. So knee up, out, joining in with the hip. And let's do that again. Pointy toes. Softening the shoulders down, elongating the fingers. And can we reverse? Pulling in on this hip, pulling in and up. Lifting the rib cage, particularly if you've been doing a lot of desk work or driving today. Often the rib cage gets really locked down when we're doing a lot of chair work. Alrighty, from here we're going to rise onto our tiptoes and arch back. We're leaning back and then coming down to touch the toes. Tucking the head in, nose to knee. Uncurling like you're rolling your spine up a wall. Lengthening up, tippy toes. And we arch back. Breathe. And come down. Uncurling like you're rolling your spine up the wall. Let's do that again. Reaching up. And leaning back. And coming down. Hang the arms loose. Floppy in the neck and the head. One more time. Breathe in. Leaning back. And hanging loose down. Uncurling. You can meet me again in the tiptoe balance. Leaning back. And then from there, coming down into a squat and lift. So we squat and lift. Breathe out. Breathe in. So I want you to vocalize your breath a little bit. Last one. Alrighty, and then from here we're going to come down and I would like you to meet me in the downward dog. So walking your hands forwards into your downward dog. Breathe in and breathe out. Are you looking for online classes that support you with getting more me time? You want to get supple, strong, feel less stressed, get in the driving seat, but actually Perhaps you've noticed that following videos on uh, YouTube isn't actually helping you commit. Uh, it's not like the teacher reaches out and says, um, correct your hips, bring your knee back, move your posture back. And this is the problem. So um, of course you can hit subscribe to get more from the Zig's YouTube channel, but let's face it, we're not gonna send our children to a school without a teacher or a tutor. I mean, what's their life going to be like if um, they're going to learn in that way? So uh, my name is Claire Louise Freeman. I'm the business owner of Zig's Exercise. And I like to encourage you to, to join me and my community online where we get together via Zoom and we practice Pilates conditioning, yoga stretches, mobility and the thing is, we get to actually talk through this stuff. We get to do it together. And to me, consistently doing it together is the thing that gives us much, much better results than if we're left flailing around in front of a video trying to do it all by ourselves. So if you'd like more information about joining me and others, please reach out, get in touch. Um, you can work with us morning, evening, from the comfort of your own home. It's great because you get all the kit together at home and it does help you to practice in between as well. So um, I'm offering a complimentary kickstart call. Uh, we can talk through what's getting your time off during holidays, 
um, it, it's the commitment that gets the motivation. So why wait? Um, book in, give me a call and uh, I'll see you on the other talk through this stuff. We get to do it together. And to me, consistently doing it together is the thing that gives us much, much better results than if we're left flailing around in front of a video trying to do it all by ourselves. So if you'd like more information about joining me and others, please reach out, get in touch. Um, you can work with us morning, evening, from the comfort of your own home. It's great because you get all the kit together at home and it does help you to practice in between as well. So um, I'm offering a complimentary kickstart call. Uh, we can talk through what's getting in the way, you know, why it's not worked so far. And um, sometimes the, the, the hardest bit is actually just picking up the phone and um, talking it through. So brave pants on. I work with all sorts of people from various walks of life, different shapes and sizes. And often people um, who do work with me do it because they say that I do it in a very non-judgmental way. Of course, it's free to talk. Uh, so you can click the link in the description box below and we can uh, get to know each other and see if we're a good fit. There's no pressure here. On the call, I'll listen in to, you know, what you need support with, what your personal needs are, and I can answer any of your questions about our online um, Pilates and yoga where we do it together in community. Why wait? This stuff doesn't get any easier. As we get older, we work with lots of busy parents, um, grandparents, uh, business owners, NHS professionals, private school teachers, regular school teachers. Um, so if that feels like you and you need that support and accountability on getting it done, that's the thing. If we've got the sessions booked in regularly, that means we're much more likely to show up. And it's that regularity that people are often missing. You know, they take holding your downward dog. And then from there, if you can mobilize through your calves and your feet. So we're gonna raise the heel on one side and then switch and do that on the other side. So pushing down, two, three, and then change. Down, two, three, and allow your toes to flex a little bit. Breathe. And last couple. Alrighty, from there we're going to walk our feet towards our hands and come down onto our back, bringing our knees up to our chest and going wide with the arms, rolling the knees over and down towards one side, but letting the head turn and look the other way, pressing the shoulders into the ground. Breathe into the belly. Release, bringing the knees up and over to the other side, pushing the knees down and turning the head, breathing into the belly, bringing the knees up and across, and do it again. Can you get your knees up towards your arm? Breathe and do it again. Let your head turn and look behind your shoulder. And the other way and looking behind the shoulder to help mobilize our neck. Going a little bit further, so you're looking a little bit further round past the shoulder. And one more each way. Breathe. So final one. Alrighty, and so we're going to move into our main core conditioning section and we'll do three different levels. So if you're uh, just coming back to exercise or not done it for a while, we'll start with level one. So we've got fingertips in the curve of the back. We're going to apply pressure down from the belly button. So we pull the belly button towards the fingers. Basic single leg stretch out and in. Can we keep steady on the hands as we move out and in? Breathe out. Breathe in. Or from a more an improver level, we've got the knees starting just above the hip, pointing the toes with the both legs hovered, keeping that good pressure on the hands. 
we're tapping the heel down for level two. Or more advanced level, we reach the toes, straight leg. Flexing our feet and then pointing our toes. So we're adding in some footwork. Breathe. Can we do four more? The last couple. And final one. And then from there, I'd like you to roll onto your front. And take your hands just slightly wider than your shoulders. So lining up your shoulder posture by drawing your blades down away from your ears and then squeezing through the pelvic floor as you lift, pushing the ground away. So we hold the cobra and then lower the body back down. So again, drawing in from the belly button as we lift, chin up, so we're looking up towards the ceiling and then eye gaze coming down. So we rest the forehead on the ground. Inhaling and lifting. Exhaling and lowering. And if you're having a, a bit of a niggly back day, you might not want to come up too high, listening in to what your back is saying to you today. Or if you're having a strong, healthy back day and you want to nudge up a little further, we can always walk the hands a bit further back. Home in on the shoulders, pressing down away from the ears. We're going to do it four more times. Breathing in on the lift. Exhaling on the lower. Pointing through the toes. So we extend the toes through the wall behind us. Reaching your toes. Last couple. So final one. And from here, if we can meet up in a plank, so we're going to bring our elbows down and make a fist and lift from the midsection. So we've got the bottom off the ground and we're on our toes. If it feels too much and the core's not quite active, you can always drop to your knees. We're going to do a rocking plank where we rock forwards and backwards. Try to keep your chest open and your bottom the same height as your shoulder. Breathe. And we're going to do that a couple more times with a rock forwards, backwards, and then let's meet up in the downward dog. So lifting the tailbone, pressing both heels down, and allowing the head to drop down through the arms, softening the shoulders so that you're sort of getting the sense of length under the armpit. And letting the eye gaze go towards the belly, breathing deeply. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Maybe close your eyes, just use this time for some breathing space. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And then again, deep, full breath. Noticing how you're feeling now and just take some time to tune into how you'd like to feel. Repeating that in your head, whether it's calm, happy, relaxed, energized, tapping into that feeling. We're going to take a walk with our feet towards our hands and I'd like you to curl, find yourself a foam roller. Okay, so I want you to aim your foam roller about halfway down your back. So, lower than the bra strap area. 
Bend your legs, hands supporting the back of your head. I'm going to breathe in, look for the ground, and then exhale as we lift. You tuck your bottom under as you come up, and then allow your belly to lengthen and elongate. Bent legs. And let's do that again. Tucking under as you come up. Breathing in as you drop back. And if you can, try and hang loose for a few seconds down there. And let's do that again. Breathing in on the drop back. And exhaling on the left. And then from here, we're going to nudge the roll just an inch higher up the back. And we're more kind of bra strap or slightly higher. Inhaling as we drop. Exhaling as we lift. So we can use the foam roller just to really mobilize all the facet joints in the middle and the upper back. Good way to work on counteracting the death posture. And we're just going to do this one more time. Help to really open out those muscles which help us breathe. And then if we move the roll again, just another inch higher up so we're more tops of the shoulder now. And again, hanging loose down for a few seconds. Exhaling and lifting, inhaling and lowering. And we're going to do that one more time. Alrighty, so from here we're going to move into shoulder bridge. Now, if you want to on your shoulder bridge, you can use a cushion between your knees. There's some more in the wardrobe over there. So we're going to park the cushion in between the knees so help yourself if you need a, a cushion they're in that wardrobe there and we're going to curl the tailbone under as we lift pushing our feet down and then imprint through the middle back and into the lower back and when you're in the bridge try to aim for a line from the knee through the hip to the chest and then imprinting down bone by bone now, often when the glutes are weak, we'll place the feet actually very close in. So try and find a happy medium of where you place your feet so that you can feel your buttocks and your hamstrings activate. If you want to up-level this one, then you can also use your foam roller under your feet. Using your roll, we're going to stay up there with it underneath your feet for a few seconds and then come back down. So tuck in the tailbone under. Now, if we're using the roller often, we'll do this with the toes and flick them up. So try to press the toes down a little bit. If you're on the floor, focus on pushing downwards through your feet when you're up in the air. Now we're going to stay up there a little bit longer, so we're working on building stamina in the glutes. We're going to take the arms up over the top of the head, thumbs towards the floor. We're pushing down through the feet and then circling as we stay up, imprinting down bone by bone. Let's do that again. So tucking under on the lift, holding at the top, pushing downwards through the feet as we circle around, keeping the hips lifted and then imprinting down bone by bone. Squeeze the pelvic floor on the left. And taking the arms up, circling around. And we're just gonna do that one last time. So tucking under. And then circling around. Alrighty, from here we're gonna move into a hamstring stretch. So. We're going to keep one foot on the floor as we take the other leg up like this. And if you can pop your hands just around the back of the leg, straightening your knee and pointing your toes directly up towards the ceiling and then using your hands just to nudge the leg towards you, still keeping that knee nice and straight. And then can we keep that top leg where it is as we straighten the bottom leg down? So pointing the toes on both 
both sets. And then more advanced, we're going to bring our nose and our knee towards each other. So nose towards the knee, knee say hello to nose, and then releasing off. Okay, so bending the legs again and then hovering in the air. Can we point the toes quite firmly? So you're really reaching your toes and nudging in with the hands till we feel a bit of pull happening there. And then once you're there, can you keep it there but straighten the bottom leg down? Breathing deeply. Nudging the nose towards the knee. Breathing deeply. Alrighty, let's relax off. And from here, we're going to turn onto our side. And notice my upper body is now towards the back edge of the mat, but my toes are pointing towards the front. And we're going to lift up from the waistline, hovering the top leg, and then bringing it down. So initially, just getting that lift in the waistline and the hip bones stacked one above the other. And then we're going to hold that top leg in the air. We'll use the weight of the bottom leg to see if we can maintain that lift in the core. Flexing our feet and coming down. So we're going to point the toes, hover, squeeze and lift. And we get the heels to touch as we keep the waistline hovered off the ground. Well, that's our second level. Staying with this version, if you prefer. If we've got that good lift in the waist. The next level, we add a split leg, keeping the upper body as steady as we can. Breathe. Lifting the waistline. Pointing the toes. Welcoming the wobble. do two more on this side. Lift it in the waist. Our Pilates side kick. Just to activate the side of the core and also the deeper lower back muscles working through our inner thighs. Okay, let's give that a go on the other side. So if you can lay down again at the back edge of your mat, but have your toes towards the front, lifting the waist. How does that lift in the waistline feel on this side as you just start with the top leg and back down, elongating your posture, lifting your ribs a little bit, pointing your toes. Notice the difference if you point your toes really firmly and put a lot of effort in versus just letting your feet kind of flop. Where do you feel it more? Because you're really extending through your legs, like you're sort of sending energy through them. Second level hovering, can we get the heels to touch? Breathe. Our third level holding at the top, adding the split forwards, backwards, keeping our upper body nice and steady. Checking in on the hips. Are they stacked one above the other? There's one hip going on a bit of a mission. Quite common on this exercise. So have a little chat with your hips if that's happening. You almost want to get the feeling of teetering on a bit of an edge. Almost like we're going to play his face plant forwards. We're just sort of catching ourselves. Last couple. Final one. Hello. And then from here, if you can meet me on the front, so have a face plant. And we're going to place a fist like this under the forehead. And then if you can catch hold of your, your foot, bringing your knees together and your heel towards your bottom. Breathing into the stretch. Now your pelvic position can make a real difference to the effectiveness of the stretch. So push your pubic bone 
or other parts for the guys into the floor so that your hips are weighted down and your pubic bone is pushed forward. Now, if you've got your heel on your bottom and you want to take the stretch further, keep the hip bone down but raise the thigh bone. So your thigh is just off the ground, but your hip bone, pubic bone remains down. Just nudges the stretch on a little bit. Breathe. Okay, so let's release and give that a go on the other side. So if we swap the fist under the forehead, knees together, heel to the bottom, and just feeling again what's going on around the pelvic position. Pushing the pubic bone down. And if you're already there with the heel on the bottom, then adding a little bit of lift in the thigh. And if you're not quite there, I encourage you to just practice these on a more consistent basis. It really helps with our back and our hips. Care in that area. Alrighty, let's pop ourselves back out of that. And we're gonna move into our downward dog again. So if you can meet me here, now you can either stick with the basic dog or we're gonna do the peeing dog. So we've got one foot down and we'll bring the other one up what sort of height can we get in that leg? Can we point the toe up to the ceiling? Holding, breathing. Allowing the heel to push down on the foot that's on the floor. Slowly bringing that leg down. And if we can shift over to the other side. So pressing the heel down and pointing the toes up towards the ceiling bit of height on that leg. Breathe. Pressing the heel down on the foot that's on the floor. And then from there, if we can walk our feet towards each other, now we're going to plant one foot forwards and then our opposite hand is going to line up like that with the toes. With our back leg, we're gonna wriggle that away so it sort of straightens out. And then turning, reach up and stack the arms one above the other. Allow your hips to soften down a little bit. Giving around our hips and glute a good old stretch. we've not had a water stop yet so we're gonna walk our hands to the middle and we'll go quite wide with the leg we'll do it on the other side and then we'll have a little water break so exploring your flexibility wide with the feet hands into the middle and then just letting the head sort of drop down having a, a look at the world from a different angle and we rock into our heels body weight sort of pushes back a little bit and then goes forward to the toes and again sort of rocks back into the heel and forward into the toes and just doing that one more time breathe and then we're going to take a walk with our hands around the other side so we've got the opposite hand here on the floor and then from there, if you can, reach up so you stack your shoulders one above the other, reaching your fingers again up, lengthening that back leg out, pushing almost back through the back heel, but nudging the body weight forwards into the heel on the front leg. Breathe. Alrighty, and then from here, if we can have a little stop for some water and a hairdo in this case so have a drink have a little breather it's warm when you get going isn't it tonight a bit more humid than you think bless him your little doggy sat by the door don't don't look he's pining for you <laughs> My friends bought a dog with a little gorgeous beagle called Donut. Very cute. Does he like donuts? Is that why you called him Donut? No. 
All right, so have a little drink and then we're going to need some weights for our next exercise. So come and help yourself. Grab some weights. Alrighty, so next up, I'm going to do uh, some waitress hands with a, a tiptoe balance. So if you can pop your weights in your hands like you're holding plates and bring your elbows in, lengthening your posture, squeezing your elbows inwards as your hands go out and letting your tailbone hang down. Let's do that again. Extending out if you want to, and coming back in. Adding a rise onto tiptoes. You want to test your balance. Try to let your tailbone drop down and draw your belly button muscle in so that you're active in your core. Now for more advanced, this may be enough for you. You can add a bit of twist. So we come up onto our tiptoes then keeping the arms wide, a steady turn to look behind and then move to look at the front. Bring the arms back in and down. And then let's give that a go on the other side. Looking behind, looking to the front and coming back in and to the center. Breathe, lengthening the lower back. Breathe. If you need to ease off, feel free to ease off. Give it a go. One more each way if you want to keep going. Alrighty, well done. So let the weights hang loose, shoulders up to your ears, squeeze and press down. So you come up, squeeze and down. And then from here, we're going to move into a squat with weight. So if you can take your feet just slightly wider than your hip, I want you to fold the weight towards your shoulder. So we sit into it, heels on the floor and come back up. So as you come down, just lowering to the point you can keep your heel on the floor and push your body weight back into your heel. So as you glance down, we should be able to see the toes in front of the knee. If you've got good squat technique and you can activate your core while you've got a happy back, we could add some reach with the weight forward. So we hold it here, push forward with the shoulder blade pulled down and then release. Breathe. Or for more advanced, if we've got happy neck and shoulders, we add some reach with the arms up by the ears more advanced option. So choose your level. I'm going to keep going for another four. Have we got two more in there? I think that's a yes. Final one. And let's relax off. Okay, great. Pop your weights down. You're going to need a stick for our next stretch. So if you grab a stick each, I'd like you to place it behind your 
behind your back. So head, shoulders, tailbone against the stick. If you can, catch hold of your foot, knees together, heel to your bottom. So into a quad stretch, we're going to really test our balance on these. So you can either stay with this version, try not to let the knee nudge in front of the other knee, bring it back. And once you've got your heel on your bottom, then we're going to add a little forward lean and we keep our head and our tailbone on the stick but get that leg behind us more horizontal. And let's slowly release and switch. So catching hold of the foot, knees together. So being upright to begin with, knees together, heel to the bottom. And then leaning in, getting a bit of lift in that leg. Getting some height in that back leg, keeping the heel on the buttock. Leaning forward enough that we feel the hamstring on that supporting leg starting to stretch at the back of the thigh. And let's release. So we're going to repeat again each side. Can you keep your head and the stick together when you're in that lean position? So leaning in. So heel on the bottom. For level two, when we're advanced, we add a bit more height on the leg, straightening that back arm. Welcome in the wobble. And let's release, shake a leg, and we'll give that a go on the other side. It's interesting to notice that difference between the, the two sides, isn't it? So, heel to the bottom again, knees together, lifting the chest, head on the stick. And keep the head and tailbone on the stick. Keep that awareness of positioning. So lean in, breathe, if you're more advanced, adding more height on the leg. Breathe. Let's release and shake a leg. Okay, grab another drink. We're nearly there. So, once you've had another slurp, let's come down to seated. Bit of six pack work, something like that. We're gonna have a sit on the floor and roll down, touching the back of your head on the ground and back up. If it's tricky to get up and down, use a strap underneath your, your foot. So there's some straps in the corner of the studio there if you need to hook a strap under your feet. Rolling down and then lifting. Now on the roll down, can you draw your belly button muscle in? Relax it at the bottom and then re-squeeze the pelvic floor and the belly button on the lift. Inhaling on the lower. Exhaling on the lift. Aiming the head back slightly so eye gaze up to the ceiling kind of helps with the head positioning on these. And once you've got that sort of fluidity of movement and kind of Ironed out the jerkiness. Definitely something I'll struggle with a lot after pregnancy. Managed to iron it out over time. We can start to build a bit of weight into it. Inhaling on the lower. Exhaling on the left. Can we do two more? And 
then on the final one, if we come down and we'll meet down on the ground here, I'd like you to interlace your fingers and turn your palms out over your head, squeezing the upper arm to your ears, or at least heading in that direction. Can we get the pinky on the floor? If not, this is a good one to work on for that. Pointing the toes, arching the back, and closing the eyes. Breathing into the belly. Long exhale out. We're going to practice a four, five, six breath on this. So we breathe in for four. Hold for five. Exhale for six. So in for four. Hold for five. Exhale for six. And can you do it one last time? In for four. Hold for five. Exhale for six. Bring your right knee to your chest. Hugging it. And then rolling the knee across, but trailing your arm out to the side. On the opposite hand, pressing the knee towards the ground. Now sometimes when the pec muscles are tight, this hand at the back will sort of gravitate down here. If you can just nudge your hand a little bit higher than your shoulder, and we're going to turn and look over that shoulder, pressing the knee down simultaneously, breathing into the stretch. In through the nose, out through the mouth. At the start of the class, we tuned into the feeling that we'd really like to feel. I'd like you to bring your attention back to that and just repeat the words of that feeling in your head, whether it's calm, happy, energized, whatever word it is for you. Just repeating as you breathe deeply. We're going to give that go on the other side. So if we can switch knees, give the other knee a hug. And then rolling your knee across the body again. So feeling for the floor with your foot. Pressing it down. And again, just noticing the positioning of that hand. Closing the eyes. Breathing deeply. And again, repeating feeling that we'd really love to feel more of. And let's rotate to the center. So we said we'd do a little bit of foam rolling today. So we'll do a bit of IT band foam rolling. So if you can find your foam roller and I'd like you to drop your bottom leg down so it's straightened out but bring your other one across like this so this leg, top leg is bent. And then if you nudge your roller under the side of your hip and with this hand we're going to sort of shunt along applying a bit of pressure with that bottom leg. So the bottom leg sort of drags along quite slowly, stripping the IT band and going down to the side of the knee. So we're going to stop when we get to the side of the knee and then slowly apply the pressure up. We're massaging into the IT band. Can make, make us squint a little bit if it's particularly tight, go over the side of your buttock, almost to your waistline, and then back down again. Breathing useful at this point, grimacing optional. Just going to do that one more time up and down on this, on this side. <laughs> Okay, good job. Let's give that a go on the other side. 
So nearly there. Nearly time for the R&R &R bit. So again, if you work your way down to the side of the knee. Sort of navigate how much pressure you put down with the other hand. And we're just going to do that one more time up and down. From there, I'd like you to pop your roller down into the middle of your mat. Mark yourself along it so that your bottom and your head is on your roll. And we're going to move into surrender pose. So notice my elbow is slightly higher than the shoulder. And the hand is slightly wider than the elbow. The hands are slightly wider than the elbow elbow just above the shoulder. Give in to gravity with your hands. Drawing the chin down and pushing the back of the head into the roll. Just for a few seconds. And then releasing. And do it again. So pull the chin in. So push the back of the head down. Movement known as retraction and then release. When we're doing a lot of device work, we're usually doing the opposite of retraction. So this is a good way of helping us to counteract a lot of what we do on devices. So chin in again, just pushing the back of the head down. Breathe. And release. And we're gonna do that one more time. So chin in, pushing down. As you hold it down, breathe deeply. Release. And then if you can pop yourself down onto your back, so just rolling off your roll. And I'd like you to rest one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. Allow your body to sink down into the mat, feeling for the breath under your hand, allow your body to relax, settle, allow your body to just be. to bring both hands to your chest now. Having a moment of gratitude with yourself for practicing this exercise today. And just kind of thanking different parts of your body for being able to do all the different little things that we do today. The rotations and twists and core exercise and mobility, flexibility strength moves just having a little internal moment with yourself of yeah hey, i did it today it's easy not to do this stuff just checking in with how you're feeling now having made time and effort to do this practice and just reminding ourselves of the little difference it makes if we just make that bit of time. Using this music to allow your attention to drift. Perhaps to favourite beach as the sun goes down.
Noticing what your energy is feeling like right now. Taking a moment to think about how can we bring some of that energy into our evening and our day tomorrow and the next day. Open your eyes and we're going to roll to our side and have a little stretch and mobilize for our neck. So if you can swing your legs around in front as you come to a seated position, I'd like you to drop your head over to one side and apply just a gentle pressure here with the hands. So you just literally let the weight of your hand drop into the weight of your head and let your head be heavy to stretch it. And roll your head around to the front, so your chin goes to your chest. Allow your head to drop over to the other side. And again, just let the weight of the hand drop into the weight of the head. And let your head roll down and around. So I hope that's made a real difference today. We can just have a little chat and a check-in, finish off. How are we feeling? <laughs>